it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The instructions. doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah. Instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! My battery! <laughs> instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got your new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like, I haven't seen a chair? Well, Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without them. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. For a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look. We need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is. You gotta find it. I already looked everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. No, look, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Ah, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have, uh, must have what? Must have what? Look, here it is. Ah. Uh. 
Ah, now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas, it says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be a dummy, instructions are for you. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let The Shadow Play. Oh, hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. <laughs> huh. What's so funny, huh? We're trying to help you out. <laughs> You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> All right, and take that. <laughs> oh. You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh-huh. Actors play in a theater, you know. And we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Glass! Tom Thomas. We need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. It's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka, you look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum, 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 yum. Let them out, wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out, whoa, myself. Ha <laughs> ha. You'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick, don't be upset. The wolf is huge, and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see? Now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. 
There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear Grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And Grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. Oh, the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, Wolf, I've got you. The hunter looks so strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swatter. <laughs> but I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> your favorite? Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> do anymore. Yo, weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the Fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A Fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the Fixies. So there you go. The Fixies help devices, and devices help the Fixies. Yes, we Fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're Fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How's it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you got to do is add hot water, and I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend, and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. 
Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. And I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. Ah, Simka! She was right over here. Ah. <sighs> Nolik! Over here. Simka! Here. Nolik! There. Up there in the oatmeal. That must be your parents. Let's get out of here. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry, I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas, we're back. You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. So today, we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. trick to show you. Whoa! Oh. That was real magic, dude. Took long to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's not the trick. It's a trick with helium. Oh, uh, what is helium? Well, helium's a very light gas they fill balloons with, so they float in the air. That's not magic at all, you silly. Who's never watched a flying balloon? The trick's not about the balloon flying. I need to get its gas. Ugh. How can I get it down from there? Get a hair dryer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, what for? So I can show you a trick. All right. Mom, can I use a hair dryer for a minute? A hair dryer is a great, simple invention. Inside a hair dryer is a fan that sucks in the air from behind it and pushes it out the front to blow your hair around and make it dry. To heat up the air, there's an electric coil inside of there. When the coil heats up, it warms up the passing air. And the hot air helps your hair dry faster. Of course, you don't have to turn on the heat setting, but then you better like that cold wind. Nolik. I'm right here. Here's the dryer. I want to see your trick. All right. Flip the switch. Now you lay the ball right into the airstream. Oh, great. The ball's flying. And now it's my turn to fly. Really? Whoa. Yeah. I'll shoot right up to the ceiling so I can grab the string and pull the balloon down. So turn off the heat and away I go. It's 
probably because you're little and weigh like nothing. And what? Do I have to wait till I'm heavier and older to get down? I don't know. Then you'd better get my sister. She'll tell us what to do. Simka, come on out. Well, what's going on? Look. Hi there. How'd you end up on the ceiling? I was just showing off that funny hairdryer trick. I'm laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I can try flipping on the hairdryer and lifting you up to Nolik. So both of us can get caught hanging up there? Well, thanks, but I don't need it. Then what do you need? Just a broom or a mop. You know how to do a trick with a mop? Uh-huh. Just make it fast. They can be quite ingenious creatures, those humans. Sometimes they figure out clever ways to use ordinary devices, like a hair dryer. Of course it can be used to dry hair, but it can also be used to dry a wet spot on clothes. And a hair dryer can even be used to remove a sticky price label. Now suppose you buy yourself a new cup that has a terribly sticky sticker that just seems impossible to peel off. Well, try warming it up with a hair dryer. The glue will dry up a bit and the label will come off easier. There's no doubt that a hair dryer can be very useful in any household. But you need to be extremely careful with it, especially in the bathroom. If water gets inside a hair dryer, there's a real risk of getting a horrible electrical shock that can seriously hurt you and destroy the hair dryer as well. Like a fixie. Really? Uh-huh. Huh. Watch me. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Just look. I'll breathe in one breath of helium. Isn't it bad for you? You can only breathe a little. Hey, hi there. Oh, Tom Thomas became a fixie. And that's my trick for you. Funny, huh? Oh, that's too funny. What a squeaky little voice you got there. <laughs> See, I'm already not a fixie. The helium stops working after just a couple seconds. <laughs> That's good. Because such a humongous fixie couldn't fit inside any machine. <laughs>